as the army is looking to you know modernize and improve its capabilities and upgrade its capabilities on one uh, in the one sense quantum cascade lasers are truly enabling they enable systems to be able to be installed onto uh, army platforms for example for airborne platforms uh, they tend to be very sensitive to to size and weight and in many cases there might be a trade off uh, of whether or not you're putting, you know, one capability or even uh, soldiers under an aircraft versus, say, an aircraft survivability system. And by, by employing quantum cascade lasers, it allows the systems to be made smaller. So now it affords the Army the ability to include them without too much a swap penalty. Daylight now for the past 15 years has, has invested a significant amount of effort uh, and resources in in developing and commercializing and then ruggedizing quantum cascade laser technology to be appropriate for military applications. What quantum cascade lasers have done is is really by miniaturizing and minimizing the swap performance, it's really enabled them to be installed the aircraft survivability systems that use quantum cascade lasers onto platforms. That, that otherwise would not be able to carry a survivability system. So, for example, the large aircraft that are flying laser-based countermeasure systems, they can afford to have a certain you know, size, weight, and, and power consumption. But when we start talking about lighter weight aircraft, in particular, uh, lightweight rotary wing aircraft, those platforms tend to, to, to have a very low tolerance for additional swap. And so by using a QCL-based systems uh, system, we've enabled those systems to be installed on those aircraft and, and, and provide that kind of capability to the warfighter. Another application uh, that we are uh, developing is using, using QCLs for free space communications. Again, because they are semiconductor lasers, they can be modulated at very high bandwidth. And so creating data links at very high bandwidth in the mid wave and long wave have a number of advantages potentially that can be uh, capabilities that can be brought to the warfighter for communicating in denied environments. QCLs can be used in, in active sensing systems. Right now, we have an instrument that is being developed and qualified for COVID-19 uh, vaccine development and quality control. I know the military has a strong interest in having that capability as well from a medical perspective. We see QCLs also reaching out into LIDAR and space communications applications, uh, not just on today's battlefield, but also extending potentially into space applications. And so when we look at you know, military operations of the future, that's another very interesting domain to be leveraging QCL technology, again, taking advantage of the operation in the mid-infrared, the size, weight, and power consumption benefits, but also the ruggedization due to how compact these systems really are could really be enabling for uh, deploying into space as well.